Have you heard and have you accepted the call of God? In last week's sermon, we took a look at the Lord being the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. As the creator of all things known and all things unknown, we saw that the Lord still cares for mankind. All right, all right. He cares, especially we are told in scripture of the one who is poor and of a contrite spirit, the one who trembles at his word. Yeah, yeah. The Lord, I tell you today, God has reached out in the past to mankind mm -hmm. And he still calls out to mankind today, whether you believe it or not. Now, the question that some may ask is this. Why does God call out to us? They may also ask, well, what is God calling out to me about? What is God calling on me for? What is God calling on me to do? Typically, when we think about someone being called by God, we usually think of preachers first. Mm -hmm. And if we don't think of preachers, we consider those that we believe have a special gift. We believe that that is a special sign that they, too, have been called by the Lord to use their special gift. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Now, I can certainly understand the idea of preachers being called and those who may have a special gift being called as well. However, mm -hmm. I, I feel I must ask all of you who genuinely believe in the Lord a question today. And that question is this. Do you realize that you have also been called by God? Oh, yeah. Again, I ask you today, do you realize that you too have been called by the Lord? Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is that I would tell you that all people have been called by God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lord has called on all people. As we see Jesus state here in our key verse for today, many are called, but few are chosen. All right. All right. You see, all people have been called by the Lord, but the question is whether or not they have answered the call. Well, so what I want to focus on here today is the call of God. I want to focus on what that call is. Mm -hmm. And I also want to focus on here today why it is so important that we not ignore the call of God, but that we answer it. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, that we accept his call. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Now, here in the 22nd chapter of Matthew's gospel, running from the first verse down through the 14th verse, we see that Jesus, he was continuing in his teachings from the chapter prior, where he had been speaking to the chief priest and the elders. You see, these leaders, they had come questioning Jesus. They questioned Jesus's authority to do all the things that Jesus had been doing. You know, Jesus had been going out teaching, preaching and healing forgiving people of their sins and they were questioning his authority to be able to do all of those things. So we see in the previous chapter that Jesus, he began to speak to these leaders right. and that he began to teach to them in parables mm -hmm. in a couple of parables. Jesus has spoken to these leaders about who were considered to be genuine in their faith. Mm -hmm. Those who were faithful we will also see in the prior chapter that Jesus, he spoke to who would enter into the kingdom of heaven. All right. All right. So when we open up this 22nd chapter of Matthew's gospel, mm -hmm. we see that Jesus was continuing on the subject of the heavenly kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. And we see him doing it in one of my favorite parables, the parable of the wedding feast. We are told here in the opening of this parable, right there in the second verse, 
that the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who Jesus said arranged a marriage for his son. Now, I feel I must explain a few things about this parable and who are represented here in this parable. Mm -hmm. The certain king that Jesus speaks of in this parable, I want you to understand today, is representative of God the Father. Mm -hmm. All right. The son that is spoken of in this parable mm -hmm. is representative of God the Son. Mm -hmm. That is Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. The arranged marriage that we see spoken of there in that verse, mm -hmm. that too should also catch your attention. Right. The marriage that the king had arranged for the son was for the son to marry a chosen people. Right. Emphasis on was there. We'll see that Jesus then stated there in the third verse that the king had sent his servants out to call those emphasis on call there mm -hmm. to call those who were invited to the wedding. Oh. So the question may be, well, who are those that were invited to the wedding? Who are those that were chosen? Mm -hmm to receive that invitation, if you will. All right. yeah. Well, those who were invited, again, were those who were chosen. And those who were chosen are representative of Israel. All right. Come on. You see, Israel was the first who were called, who were chosen, who were invited to be married to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, though they were the first ones invited, I want you to know today that the Lord always desired to be married to his creation. Mm -hmm. That is mankind. That is all of mankind. Yes, sir. See, the first time we actually see the call of God actually goes back to Adam and Eve in the garden. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody may wonder what I mean by this. All right. Now, we'll actually see what the call of God is by going back to the garden. So let's for a moment briefly take a trip back to the garden here. Mm -hmm. In the garden, we'll see that the Lord desired for mankind to be fruitful, right? right? God desired for mankind to be fruitful. That is to say that God desired for mankind to be beneficial, God desired for mankind to be a blessing, if you will. God desired for mankind to multiply, to spread out, we know from Scripture. Now, to be fruitful, the Lord looked for Adam and Eve to do one thing, and one thing only. The Lord desired for Adam and Eve to be obedient. Yes, sir. To his word. Do you hear me here today? Mm -hmm. All right. They had one rule that God gave to them yeah, yeah, yeah. that they were supposed to follow, mm -hmm. that they were supposed to keep, that they were supposed to be obedient to. Mm -hmm. Come on, son. The one rule that they were given to follow was to not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All right. Mm -hmm. Fix it. Fix it. Unfortunately, as we know, this call for obedience was not followed by Adam and Eve. All right. All right. Sin entered into the picture because they ate from the tree, mm -hmm. the one tree that they were not supposed to eat from. Oh, yeah, yeah. And after sin entered the picture, we will see that the Lord had a choice to make. He could have gave up on his creation or he could have continued with his creation. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that he continued with his creation because, hey, we are still here today. All right. All right. So after sin entered into the picture, we see that God did not stop reaching out to mankind as he continued to look for man to be obedient mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we see that the Lord began to call for mankind to do one thing. All right. God called for mankind to repent. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. That is to say that the Lord called for mankind to turn away from wickedness. Mm -hmm. 
God called for mankind to turn away from sin and to turn to him. That is to follow him. That is to have faith in him. That is again to be obedient to him. During the sinful days of Noah, we saw this call of repentance made to man. During the days of Moses and even during the days of the kings of Israel, we will see that the Lord called for Israel, the chosen ones, to repent from its sin. Mm -hmm. Now, let us take notice here how this call was taken from the parable today, because you see, Jesus is summing up history here in this parable today. Mm -hmm. We see that Jesus stated there in the fifth verse that Jesus stated that those who the servants had called on were not willing to answer the call. Mm -hmm. They were either not willing to answer the call or Mm -hmm. they made light of the call. We are told there Mm -hmm. and we're told that they went their own way. One went to the farm and the other went back to his own business, we are told there. In other words, this call of repentance was ignored. In other words, the call of God was ignored. It was taken lightly, we are told there. They, the children of Israel, the chosen ones, Mm -hmm. they were not willing to accept God's call. They were not willing to repent. We are told here in this parable, there in the sixth verse, that some were so wicked in their heart that they seized the king's servants. Mm -hmm. That they treated them spitefully and that they even went to kill the king's servants, we're told there. Now, we know that this was something that actually happened. Mm -hmm. We know that this was something that happened throughout Old Testament scripture, especially during the days of Ahab and Jezebel, who killed hundreds, hundreds of God's servants, the prophets. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So Israel, I want you to understand, they were treating the call of God like how we treat a call from an unknown phone number. (laughs) Y'all chuckle and laugh about it, but that's what they were doing. Y'all know how we do. An unknown call come in. We don't answer it. If we do, we just pick it up and we hang the phone back up. Or... If you got your smartphone, you just swipe that red circle. Decline. Israel was declining God's call. I want you to know today that, again, the Lord is still calling out to mankind. God is still calling out to all people. However, I began to wonder how many of us are doing as Israel did. With the call that was coming from the Lord. Mm -hmm. How many of us are taking our phone and we're swiping that red circle? Mm -hmm. How many of us are ignoring and rejecting the Lord's call? Mm -hmm. How many of us are making lightly, taking lightly of the call of God today? Mm -hmm. We will see that Jesus, he began to testify here in this parable today. To the fact that God is still calling out to mankind for those of you that don't believe me. Mm-hmm. Though we will see that this call here isn't just a call to a specific group of people as it once was. Mm-hmm. No, we'll see that the Lord was reaching out, is reaching out to all nations of people with this call now. Mm-hmm. We will see this. When Jesus stated there that the king again sent out his servants Mm -hmm. to let people know that the wedding was now ready. Mm -hmm. However, let's notice here that those who were once invited, Jesus said there, were now considered to not be worthy. Mm -hmm. Instead of sending his servants just to those who were now not worthy, We'll see there from the eighth through the 10th verse. Mm -hmm. 
we we'll see that the king told his servants to go out into the highways. Yeah, yeah. You see, the king was looking for people. All right, all right. So the king sent his servants now out into the highways mm -hmm. and he told them to gather together all. Yeah. Is what my Bible says there. Mm -hmm. Says to gather together all who they found. Every single person that was in the highway mm -hmm. was supposed to be gathered together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the highway is a re representation of paths, right? Mm -hmm. and these paths, as we look at a chart of a highway system in just Atlanta, mm -hmm. we know that these paths, that they go all over the place. Mm -hmm. They go in all directions, yeah. north, south, east, west. Mm -hmm. Before the prophets, they delivered the call of God in one direction, and that direction was to Israel. Mm -hmm. But now the new servants, they were to go into the highways. In other words, they were to go in every direction with the call of God. Mm -hmm. As we see Jesus state in the Great Commission, we, the servants of Christ, yeah, yeah. we are to baptize all nations. Mm -hmm. We are to baptize all nations in the name of the Father, yeah. in the name of the Son, mm -hmm. in the name of the Holy Ghost. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Today's call, we should understand, is no different from the call of old. Jesus, he told his followers to teach others to observe all things that he commanded. Mm -hmm. So someone may ask, well, what did Jesus command for us to do? All right. yeah. When he began his ministry, mm -hmm. Jesus, he began his ministry with this message. Repent, Jesus said, all right. mm -hmm. for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right. Repent. Yeah. Yeah. Is what Jesus began his ministry with. Mm -hmm. The call of God. Repent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Jesus, he went on to command his followers to love the Lord. Repent. Mm -hmm. Turn from sin. Turn to God. Love the Lord. Mm -hmm. Have faith in him. Mm -hmm. The manner in which we are to have faith is to act the same way that God does. Right. God is love. We ought to act with love. Mm -hmm. So we saw that Jesus said that not only should we love the Lord with our whole heart, but that we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Oops, I said it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. So let us understand that the call of the Lord is the same today as it was yesterday. As we have said before, God does not change. Right. He's the same today as he was yesterday and will be tomorrow and forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, his call, his message is the same. It comes from him. Right. It is the same today as it was yesterday and will be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So someone may ask, why is the Lord reaching out to mankind with the same message repeatedly? over and over and over again. Well, the reason why God continues to call out to man with this same message is because he desires for his son to be married. All right. God desires for his son to be married. All right. well. well, the Lord, I want you to understand today. He doesn't want his son to be married to just something, mm -hmm. some, any old body. God does not desire for his son to be married to a wife that is full of sin, that is full of wickedness. I don't know if you hear me here today. I suppose that every parent could understand that, right? We don't want our children to be married to someone who is wicked, someone who is not good for them. We want our children to be married to someone who is good for them. That is what we would desire. So the father who is holy, mm -hmm. I can only imagine if we want what is good for our child, he wants what is good for his son. Amen. Mm -hmm. All 
So the father who is holy desires for his son to be wedded, to be married to a wife that is holy as well. I don't know if you hear me here. Amen. So with that frame of mind, the father is arranging for his son to take a bride that is good, to take a bride that is holy. The church is supposed to be the bride of Christ. So the church being the bride of Christ, we ourselves, we ought to be holy. Do you hear me? You as a genuine believer who makes up the body of the church today. And I'm not talking about this place. I'm talking about the collective body. You yourself ought to be holy. So the Lord is continuously calling out for us to be obedient today because in our obedience to him, his way, we become righteous in our obedience to his way. That is his rules. If we keep them, if we follow them, we become righteous. We become worthy to be married to Christ. Unfortunately, as this call has taken to the highway, some will suggest that they've never heard it. Some will suggest that they don't know of God's call to be holy, to be righteous, to repent, to be obedient to him. However, as we saw in my sermon last week, Paul told the Romans that he said, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen when speaking of the Lord mm -hmm. said being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, that is the father, the son, the Holy spirit, mm -hmm. so that they are without excuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The message, the call has been taken to the highways. Mm -hmm. It is spread around the globe. It is so spread that there is no excuse to not know of God's call for repentance, to not know that you can turn from sin, that you can be forgiven of it, receive God's mercy and have salvation. That message is known today. See, frankly, we're living thousands of years after the death and resurrection of Christ. We are living in the age of the church where the Lord's servants have taken to the highways with the good news. During the age of the church, the call of God has gone out into the highways in every direction. Now I'm pointing this out to you today because Again, there is no excuse and there will be no excuse. We will see here, even in the parable that Jesus testifies when he spoke of the future, when this would happen. Jesus points out that after the new servants were sent into the highways there in the 10th verse, he speaks of how the day of the wedding had arrived. And when the day had arrived, the king went into the wedding hall, we are told there. And you'll notice that when the king went into the wedding hall, we're told there that the wedding hall was filled. Mm -hmm. It was full. Right. So the message clearly had been sent out. All right. yeah. Come to the wedding. Mm -hmm. And we'll see that in that verse, it was so full that good and bad were there. Mm -hmm. Now this is where the interesting stuff starts to happen here. Yeah. Yeah. Again, there are many people who know of God today, but have purposely chosen not to accept his call. So when you have heard the call of God and when you have blatantly chosen to decline and reject this call, yeah, know that there won't be any excuses here today. And we'll see that one specific man here in the wedding hall, that happened to him there. We'll see here that in this parable, Jesus, he first spoke of what happened to those who brought great harm to the first servants mm -hmm. and they rejected the call of God. 
We told there in the seventh verse that the king responded by sending out his armies and destroying them in their cities. Again, we know that this was something that happens because this speaks of what happened in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. how Israel and how Jerusalem was conquered and destroyed, mm -hmm. how their city, Jerusalem, was burned. But we'll also see here that there are consequences that are going to be waiting those who are rejecting the call today, just as there were consequences for those who rejected the call of God in the Old Testament days. Jesus, he points to the king here in the 11th and the 12th verse mm -hmm. that when he looked at the crowd that was gathered there in the wedding hall, yeah. the king noticed that someone in the gathering, some were, were dressed in the proper wedding garments we see there, but this one particular man, <laughs> this one particular man we are told here was not dressed in the proper wedding garments. All right. yeah. Yeah. Just came in wearing what he was wearing. Mm -hmm. Like he was not coming to this wedding. All right. Yeah. So why did this man arrive this way? Mm -hmm. Why did he arrive at the wedding hall not wearing the proper wedding garments? Clearly this man had heard of the call yeah. Clearly this man knew that he was supposed to be there in the wedding hall because he's there. Mm -hmm. So clearly he knew what was going on. So again, the question is, why did he show up the way that he showed up? I don't know. Yeah. When the king asked him this question, hey, why are you here dressed the way that you are? Mm -hmm. Why aren't you wearing the proper garments? Mm -hmm. This man couldn't come up with a reason. This man couldn't come up with an excuse mm -hmm. because there was no excuse. <laughs> this man, we are told, stood there speechless. Mm -hmm. Now, this exchange that we see here, it is representative of something as well. And we touched on this in our Sunday school lesson today. But first, I want you to understand that this man was not dressed in the holy garments. Mm -hmm. This man was dressed in his wickedness. Yeah. He was not holy. Uh -huh. He had heard of what to wear, but he chose to come dressed as he was. Oh, yeah. He heard the call, but he didn't pay the call any attention. Uh -huh. He made light of the call, yeah. if you will. After not being able to answer the king why he had come to the wedding as he did, dressed, the king, we are told in the 13th verse, immediately had him bound, mm -hmm. had him removed from the wedding hall, and then had him cast, had him thrown into outer darkness. Yeah, yeah. And again, I tell you that this is representative of something that is greater. Mm -hmm. This parable, this part specifically speaks of the Lord's final judgments. Mm -hmm. One day, all of us will go and we will stand before the Lord. Again, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Those who heard the call of God and accepted it, put on the proper wedding garments, we are told that they will go before the judgment seat of Christ and they will be rewarded. Mm -hmm. Not only will they be rewarded, but we will all be married to Christ for all of eternity because we heard the call, we chose to answer the call, and we chose to accept the call. Yeah, yeah. That's the most important part, yeah. accepting the call. Yeah, yeah. However, those who are out of attire, mm -hmm because they chose to ignore the call of God and walk around in sin, mm -hmm. they will go before the great white throne. Mm -hmm. And at the great white throne, they will stand there speechless as the Lord delivers judgment upon them. Mm -hmm. They will have no excuse. Mm -hmm. There is no excuse 
that they could use that will persuade God to do otherwise. Mm -hmm. No, the Lord is going to cast them out of their presence for all of eternity. They will be cast out into outer darkness. They will not be allowed to dwell in the heavenly kingdom. They will not be allowed to marry the only begotten son of the father. This is the consequence that awaits all those who reject the call of repentance today. This is the consequence that awaits the, all of those that choose not to be obedient to the Lord today. That consequence is eternal darkness without the Lord being present today. I tell you today that a new season is beginning to bloom right before our eyes. Trees are starting to wake up from their slumber today. And soon flowers will begin to bloom and grass will begin to green again. I liken the call of God to the season of spring today, Mm -hmm. but it is spring for the soul. You see, the call of God can and should wake up your soul today. It should wake your soul up from its slumber. Mm -hmm. Now, to be asleep in this instance means to be dead in trespasses, to be dead in sin in your soul today. Mm -hmm. However, Jesus once stated, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life, Mm -hmm. Jesus said. They are life for the soul. In his writings, Paul wrote, even when we were dead in trespasses, Mm -hmm. God made us alive. God woke us up from sin, if you will, together with Christ. So again, I tell you today that the call of God can and should quicken. Mm -hmm. It should wake up all people. The reason why I say should is because some hear the Lord's call and simply don't wake up out of their slumber. They love sleep. And because they love sleep so much, they essentially treat God's call like how we treat an alarm when it go off in the morning. You know, we we hate to hear that alarm go off in the morning. We just we just want a few more minutes to just stay asleep. And so there are many people today and for the longest of times who have been telling God just a few more minutes. Mm -hmm. Just give me a few more minutes. Keep on telling God just a few more minutes and you may have waited too late. Mm -hmm. See, in the past, the Lord said to Israel, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves Mm -hmm. and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear Mm -hmm. from heaven Mm -hmm. and will forgive their sin and heal their land. The Lord was telling Israel today, if you would just pick up the phone, if you would just answer my call, Mm -hmm. if you would do as I ask, I will heal you. I will bless you. But this call was ignored. This call of the past is again the same today. The Lord calls for us to humble ourselves. The Lord calls for us to pray and to seek his face. The Lord calls for us to turn from our wicked ways. You see, there is a great reward that awaits all of those that accept God's call today. When we wake up from our sleep, the Lord tells us that we are going to feel good. No need to stay asleep. We are going to be healed in our soul. Not only are we going to be healed in our soul, this healing, I tell you today, it is going to bring you a great amount of joy is going to bring you so great of joy. If you just wake up out of your sleep and accept God's call today, this is a joy that nothing and nobody can take away from you. 
This is a joy that nothing and nobody can take away from those that wake up out of their slumber and accept the call of God. This joy I want you to know today, it is better than sleep. It is better than the feeling of sleep. So, again, someone may ask, what is the call of God? What is the call of God? The call of God is to wake up. The call of God is to wake up from the trespasses of sin, to repent, to turn, and to then follow him, to be obedient to his way. Someone may ask, well, who has been called by God? Who has been called by God? Everybody, everyone, not just the preacher, not just the one who we believe have a special gift. Everyone has been called by God. You have been called by God today. Every single person that walks the earth has been called by God. Yet at the same time, as we see in our key verse, only a few are chosen. The reason only a few are chosen is because only a few actually answer, actually accept the call of God. God is calling us unto salvation today. And I would encourage and I would hope that you would answer and accept that call. Today, I tell you that we are in a season of repentance. In fact, I would tell you that mankind, we have been in a season of repentance for a very long time. We have been in the season of repentance since Christ ministered repentance and salvation to the whole world. The question for you today is this, are you going to answer that call? Not only are you going to answer that call, but are you going to accept that call? Are you going to accept the call to repent? Are you going to accept the call to be obedient today? I implore all of you who remain asleep today to wake up from your slumber. And when that phone is ringing and you see God on that phone, don't swipe to decline that call today. Swipe the green circle today. Accept that call. Accept Christ as your savior. Amen. 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 Amen.